And I thought of the scripture that says the root of bitterness springs up. It troubles you and it defiles many. How many know that God is looking for those areas of our hearts that are untended? Come on, areas of our heart where maybe we believe in forgiveness, but have we actually done it? Come on, God is taking us to a higher standard. We want more authority. He's going to say, okay, let me get into those areas of your life so that I can position you for greater authority. How many want to say, Lord, do it with me? Like only like two people. Let's, let's try that again. How many say, Lord, do that with me? Come on, how many want to be pleasing to the Lord in all ways? Okay, that the Lord can get in there and deal with those things. So God wants us to take back our authority. Number three, God wants us to take back our prosperity. Okay, we got we to gotta get over these religious ideologies that says somehow God doesn't want us blessed. I had to actually get delivered from a spirit of poverty. Honestly, because, and I'll tell you why. I wasn't raised poor. I was very middle class in my family. But... When I got saved and decided to go into ministry, it really was a disappointment to my parents because my parents were all about education and the profession and they didn't understand the call of God on my life. And my dad made a statement to me. I'm a daddy's girl. But he made a statement to me. He said, what are you going to do? Be one of those money-grabbing preachers. Isn't that sad? That's what the world thinks. And I made a vow in my heart that I would rather have nothing than ever be in a position to be accused of being in ministry for money. And I want you to know it worked. Because <laughs> we were so poor for so many years. So poor for so many years. And I had to realize that I had come into agreement with the spirit of poverty and that the enemy was robbing from me continuously because I had a wrong mindset. How many understand God wants us to be blessed? God wants us to be prospered. Do you remember what it said back in the, we'll, we'll read the next scripture. Go to the next scripture. Do you remember what it said back in Exodus? It says that when they came out, oh, okay, I, I'm just going to give you this scripture. When they came out of bondage in Egypt, it says they demanded all the wealth of Egypt as they came out. You know? And I want to take you back to, to Genesis 1. You can go back to that slide. Sorry, I'm jumping you around. Okay, let's go back to that other slide that you were on that talked about that one. Yes. Look at this. Be fruitful, multiply, replenish the earth, subdue, and have dominion. Look at what these words mean. To bear fruit, to grow, and to increase. Multiply. To increase in every respect. To bring in abundance. To enlarge, excel, and be exceedingly full. To be an authority. To make great. To be or become great. To increase greatly or exceedingly. This is what God has called us to do. Do you see this? This is what you were created for. To replenish the earth, to make full, consecrated, accomplished, to satisfy. To subdue means to conquer and bring in subjection. To have dominion means to, re to rule and to prevail over. Do you understand? We've lived in such limitation. God wants to break us out of limitation. And I'm preaching to myself right now too. God wants to break us out of limitation. I'm not just talking about money. I'm saying, how, would you allow God to bring you into a greater place of influence? Would you allow God to bring you into a, a, a place where you're the head and not the tail? Come on, we, we, where God will put you at the top instead of at the bottom? Are, are we willing to let God make us what he created us to be? I had to get delivered. I had to totally get delivered of a poverty mindset. That the enemy had robbed from me. People would bless me, I'd give it away. And that's, you know, it's good. But here's the big thing. You can't outgive God. So the more I'd give it away, the more God would bless me. And then I was frustrated. I'd give it away again. Finally, one day the Lord said, I keep sending you all these gifts and you keep giving my gifts away. And I realized that my, my husband, my heavenly husband, wanted to bless me. And give me gifts. The same, my husband loves to give gifts. He gets an A plus for giving gifts. <laughs> a plus. He also gets an A plus for cleaning out the refrigerator when it goes to the stage of science experiments. Okay, he gets an A plus for that as well. Okay, so, so we, how many feel the challenge of the Lord to say, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to multiply and increase in every area, in every respect. Amen. Number four, recovery agents must be people of humility. 
Okay? We've got to stay humble. Can we be both humble and powerful? Yes. Absolutely. Okay? It says charm can be misleading and beauty is vain and so quickly fades. But this virtuous woman lives in the wonder, awe, and fear of the Lord. She will be praised throughout eternity. Listen, I, I, I literally found that if ever I start feeling a little bit more like I'm a little full of myself, like I know what I'm doing <laughs> out there, usually there's usually a nice little humbling experience that's waiting for me somewhere along the line. How many, how many found that, okay? There's actually a scripture that says, or, or, a, or a concept that says, it's better to fall on the rock than for the rock to fall on you, okay? So it's better to humble yourself than to have God humble you. Listen to what it says. She searches out continually to possess that which is pure and righteous. She delights in the work of her hands. She gives out revelation truth to feed others. She is like a trading ship bringing divine supplies from the merchant. Listen, we need to always remember our job. Winning souls, bringing the kingdom. We've got to get out of a survival mode. We've got to get out of a mode that it's all about us. And we've got to shift into a revival mode and understand that there's a whole world out there that needs Jesus. And that our job is to bring the gospel of the kingdom, to pray for the sick, and to pray in our prodigal children like we did today. And I, I'd like you to stand up because I think that there's been probably people here have probably been raised in all kinds of different church backgrounds. And that's awesome. There's good, there's bad, there's ugly in that, okay? But God really wants to remake the church. There's a reset. There's a, a, a remaking of the church, a, 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 an understanding of our true identity in Christ. And so I want to pray and declare this over you, Isaiah 61, verse 7, which in the King James says, instead of your shame, you shall have double honor. And instead of confusion, you shall rejoice in your portion. Therefore, in your land... You will possess double, say double, and everlasting joy shall be yours. In another translation, it says, because you got a double dose of trouble and more than your share of contempt, your inheritance in your land is going to be doubled and your joy is going to go on forever. Come on, come on, your joy is going to go, God is going to break you out of where you've been and bring you into a double portion. Yesterday morning, I was getting ready to preach, and I, I mean, I preached on the double portion most of, my, most of my prophetic life. And you know what I did? I felt like the Lord told me, go look up double portion. You know what double portion is in Hebrew? It's the word double, and the word portion is the word pay. For those of you that know the Hebraic calendar, know that we are in the decade of pay, which is the mouth. God wants to give us new authority in what we pray, in what we say, on what we decree, when we're ministering to somebody, when we're praying for our prodigal children, God wants to give us a double pay. This is a double pay season, a double portion season. We're going to rejoice in the things that come out of our mouth because we're going to call the things that are not as though they are. Is that Bible? Is that Bible? Lift your hands up. Let me bless you. Father, I thank you, God, for the church, for this valiant victorious, virtuous church that you're raising up, God, not just in this house, but throughout this area, throughout this nation, throughout the world. God, you are raising up an ecclesia who knows who she is, who knows what we've been called to do, Lord, who knows how to take hold of the wheels of government, who knows how to take nations into themselves and carry it as our own, who knows how to speak words of life and future and destiny to begin to turn the world upside down. Lord, we submit ourselves to you. We say, empower us by your Holy Spirit and let us go out from this place and be the church everywhere we go. In Jesus' mighty name, amen and amen.